In this Nuage tutorial, we're going to learn about preview mode in the automation system. Preview is designed to allow you to temporarily suspend the automation system in certain key areas so that you can preview new settings. And the idea is that you're not going to get rid of the old settings, but you just want to try something new. And then if you come up with new settings and you want to punch those in and, and write them, uh, you can do that. Um, so here's how it works. Now on the fader unit, you have a dedicated preview button. Uh, this enables the preview mode. When, uh, when preview is enabled, you can see the display here in the automation panel. And then of course, on the touch screen of the uh, master unit. Right now we're just in preview mode. There's no parameter in preview yet. You actually have to touch a parameter to put it in preview mode. So in this case, we're just going to stick with volume to keep it simple. Once I touch the fader here, now this channel is in, or this automation lane is in preview mode. So what's going to happen is as I play the project, uh, the fader is not going to move because the volume parameter has been suspended. It's been put into preview mode. Here we go. Fader's not moving. If I were to take it out of preview mode, the fader would follow the automation curve as normal. So putting it back into preview, touching the parameter, now the volume parameter is in preview. And I can turn the volume down, set it wherever I want to, listen to it. You even see the deviation amount here in the project window, how far away the preview setting is from the current setting in the automation. So now let's say I have found my new level. Let's say it's this level here. And I want to punch that setting in to the automation lane and actually write the data. I'm still in preview mode. Nothing's changed. I start playback and I hit this punch button. Now you can see that that, that level is being written into the automation lane itself. And also I had a fill mode turned on. I had filled a loop turned on. So the, what I'm punching in now is going to fill to the loop. Let me, let me turn that off again. Let's try this one more time. Uh, so preview, touching that level. I'm turning the fader up. Now I want to punch that new setting in, punch. And now just wait for a little bit, write some of this value in. Whenever I'm done, I can stop. And now the preview value has been punched in to uh, the automation lane. So now with volume by itself, this is a very simple example. And where this really comes into play is when you have multiple parameters that you want to preview and then eventually punch in once you get a series of settings ready to go, like it's sounding, it's sounding good to you, then you can punch in all these different parameters together as one, um, one unit, so to speak. So I'm just using the example of, of uh, volume just to keep it simple for now. We can also use auto punch with preview. So if I'm in this area here and I'm in preview mode and I've got this, the fader in preview and I find a setting, now I want to punch this in. I can go back ahead of the left locator and when the left locator is reached, the value will be punched in. Then it will continue to write until I reach the right locator. And just like normal auto punch in and punch out, it will punch this value out again, just like that. One other method of punching in is to use the punch on play. So if I set up a channel on preview and I find a level that I like, let's say, and, um, but I, I haven't, been playing the transport. I'm just sort of setting something up. Um, and then I want to punch in when I press play. So I'm going to set punch on play, then press play. And it punches in immediately. Again, this is just a simple example with one parameter. Um, these functions are more helpful when there's a lot of parameters together that you're trying to set up and in preview and punch in together. Preview will follow all of the fill modes. So if you have fill to loop 
turned on. And we go into preview and get the fader, uh, fader, the volume parameter in preview and set it to a new level. And then I decide to punch in. It will punch in on the fly, but once I stop, that value will be filled to the loop in this case, but filled to whatever the fill setting is at that point. So the punch value follows the fill setting as well. The one last setting involved in preview is the suspend function. So if this channel is in preview and I have the volume uh, set to a preview value, I can use the suspend button here to temporarily turn preview off. And as you can see, the fader will jump back to the actual automation level. Turn, turn suspend off and we go to our preview level turn it back on, we go to the previously written level. Now where this is helpful, again, is if you're setting a lot of different parameters together and you wanna be able to listen to the effect of all those parameter changes with preview on, and then you wanna suspend it without losing those settings, suspend it and go back to the original automation, press suspend. Then if you wanna go back to the new preview levels, turn off suspend and everything gets um, put back into preview mode. These are more advanced automation features when you're getting into more complex tasks like dialogue matching between scenes in a film project uh, and that sort of thing. So that's the basic overlook of preview mode. We'll use this again in other tutorials in, uh, in a more advanced sense so you can get an idea of how it's used in the real world. So we'll be back with more automation tutorials. <laughs>